Hi, this is Mrs. Kidman, and in this video, we're going to be discussing the proof of the perpendicular bisector theorem. So let's check it out. So first, we're going to do a two-column proof. So let me set up my two columns. I've got my statement on one side and my reason on the other. Now remember, anytime we do a two-column proof, we're always going to do what we're given first. So CP is the perpendicular bisector of segment AB, and that information is given to us. The next thing we want to do here in our proof is we want to define, like, what does that mean? What does a perpendicular bisector tell us? Why is that so important? Well, what it means is two things. It means that the point P is the midpoint of segment AB, and it also means that CB is perpendicular to segment AB. Okay, that's the definition of a perpendicular bisector. Now, those are so important for us to know because by knowing that, we can then expand out. Now, ultimately, when we're trying to prove this, what our goal is, is we're going to try to prove that this triangle here is the same as this triangle here. And if those two triangles are the same, then that means that these two sides have to be the same. That's kind of the method that we're going to go to prove this. So knowing that these things are the same kind of tells us two things. The first thing it tells us is that AP is equal to PB. And that's by the definition of a midpoint, right? A midpoint divides a segment exactly in half, meaning both sides are equal. Okay, and then knowing that this angle is a right angle and that that's the midpoint, what that ends up meaning is that angle APC, or the measure of that angle, is equal to the measure of angle BPC, and those both equal 90 degrees. And that's by the definition of perpendicular because perpendicular means that it intersects at a 90 degree angle right so knowing these two things we can then talk about the relationship between ap and pb and about those angles instead of in terms of equality in terms of congruence so ap is congruent or that segment is congruent to segment p well, it's not congruent to segment PB per se, but it's congruent to segment BP. Now, it's important there to note that we have to keep those congruent parts the same. So the end point needs to be in the same spot as the end point. The midpoint needs to be in the same spot as the midpoint. So AP is congruent to BP. And the reason why is by the definition of congruence. Now, by that same property, that definition of congruence, we also know that angle APC is congruent to angle BPC. And again, that's by that definition of congruence. So using those two things, we can use that definition of congruence to then prove that those triangles are congruent. Now, right now, we've just proven that this side, oh, our page is moving here, that this side is congruent to this side and this angle is congruent to this angle. Great. Now, we can use those triangle congruence properties like side angle side, angle angle side, angle, side angle, things like that to prove this. Now we've got a side and an angle here. The easiest thing to do is to use this side here as our third side and use that side angle side. And that's what we're going to do. So how do we know that that side's congruent to itself? Well, we know that CP is congruent to CP by the reflexive property. Reflexive property of congruence. And what that property says is it just tells us that a segment is congruent to itself. Great. Okay, so now that we have that this side is congruent to this, this angle is congruent to that, and this side is congruent to itself, we have a side angle and side that are all congruent. And so we know that that means that triangle CAP is going to be congruent to triangle CBP by the side angle side triangle congruence theorem which basically says if a side, an angle, and a side are congruent, then the whole triangle is congruent. Now, now that we know that that whole triangle is congruent, we can use something called the corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Okay, C, P, C, T are congruent. That's what the last C stands for. So C, P, C, T, C means corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Wow, that's a long thing to write. So we use CPCTC to represent that. So by that congruent parts of congru or congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent, or corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. What that means is that we can say that side CA is congruent. So segment CA 
is congruent to segment CB because they're corresponding parts of those congruent triangles. And by the definition of congruence, we can prove that segment CA is equal to the length of segment CB. So what we really do in that perpendicular bisector theorem, really what it does is it takes into account that side angle side theorem and says that if these, if this perpendicular bisector divides it into two equal pieces, which are, and then we bisect it perpendicularly, so we get two right angles, with that piece that is the, per the perpendicular bisector line or ray, what it ends up doing is it creates a congruent triangle, which makes those other two sides always equal. And that's why both the converse and the perpendicular bisector theorem works. So please check out the next video in which we discuss the angle bisector theorem and its converse and how we can use it to find different parts of triangles.